Number 66 off the 1996 Practice Physics GRE. 66. When it is about the same distance from the Sun as is Jupiter, a spacecraft on a mission to the outer planets has a speed that is 1.5 times the speed of Jupiter in its orbit. Which of the following describes the orbit of the spacecraft about the Sun? Answers. Spiral, circle, ellipse, parabola, hyperbola. Immediately you should be able to eliminate at least one of these answers and that one is uh, the spiral. Get out of here, spiral. Uh, given what we know about gravity as a conservative force, the way it works in our universe, you have to have closed orbitals. And so these are your classic orbitals that we see uh, with gravity in our solar system as we know it. And uh, you can actually eliminate two more if you're clever about it. Uh, the, the odds of it being a circle or a parabola as the answer are very, very small because these are very... Uh, mathematical set cases, uh, specific cases, I should say, of these orbits. And as it turns out, we don't see these in nature. So the test makers would really have to be on a stretch here to uh, give us these as an answer. And I can give you even more good reasons to cross off uh, at least a circle um, as we go. But ellipse and parabola, these are the types of orbits that we see in nature. Para uh, planets tend to go in ellipses around the sun. They are very circle-like though. So within certain tolerances it's okay to model them as a circle. And uh, comets tend to go in hyperbolic orbits. Uh, the parabola is a very specific case um, and we'll talk about that a little bit. But here I've drawn a circular orbit for Jupiter. So we're going to assume a circular orbit for Jupiter because Again, within certain tolerances, it's a circular orbit. Um, and then we're, we're saying uh, we have a little satellite here. Incidentally, we could imagine giving Jupiter itself the 1.5 times of a kick. It doesn't have to be a satellite near Jupiter. We could give Jupiter itself 1.5 times its velocity and try and figure out what type of orbital it's, it goes into. It'll be the same as this little satellite we're talking about. So we would increase its orbit. So... If I drew a circular orbit, if I drew another circular orbit here, it would have to be continuous. We'd have to make a circle with this guy coming back here to where it was before. So if this is a circular orbit, is the sun going to be at the center? I know it doesn't look like a circular orbit, but if this was a circle, the sun could no longer be at the center, right? So we can't have a circular orbit that's connected to... Uh, where Jupiter was at. We cannot have a circular orbit. So if you weren't convinced before, you should be now that it can't be a circular orbit. We could, however, give this a kick in its velocity and make like an ellipse. Ah, now that's fine. We could give it an elliptical orbit and it would come back here. Sure. Okay. What if we kept increasing the kick? So this is a whole family. We have a circular curve and then we have increasingly more elliptical ellipses or more stretched out ellipses um, and then eventually we're getting to a point where you would say hold on that is not an ellipse that thing is not closing on itself that is going out to infinity at that point you've got to the parabola as it turns out the parabola sort of marks the transition it's that one specific case between elliptical orbits as these get more and more elliptical um, and then you move on into the hyperbolas. So this starts stretching out into the hyperbolic orbits. And so that parabola is just that one case where your velocity happens to equal the escape velocity. So I guess it's kind of a trivia thing. If you were in a theoretical situation where you put something just on its escape velocity, it would be in a parabolic orbit. But as I say, we just don't tend to see that in nature. The factors mix it up so that even if you're at a theoretical parabola at one point you don't stay there for very long you move into the ellipses or the hyperbolas so again i want to decide between these two i need to decide if this velocity 1.5 times the velocity of jupiter is enough of a kick to put me into an ellipse or even more of a kick to put me into the hyperbola and so i'm going to use energy to do that the kinetic energy of something out in the solar system is similar to all the other kinetic energy uh, representations you know well not all of them but uh, the the classical uh, representations now the potential energy we don't just do uh, e potential 
Here, potential energy is MGH, right? Uh, that's not going to work here because this is assuming a constant radius. The G is a constant radius at our surface, so we're not using this potential energy. We need the one for orbitals, and that is a negative big G, the gravitational constant. Big M being the mass at the center, the sun in this case. Little m being the mass of Jupiter or the satellite that we're talking about divided by r, and that's the distance between them. If you don't recall where this comes from, you can run through the derivation. Uh, it's You get there through this equation, which is also important for a lot of physics GRA things. This is the potential. I could just have easily wrote this as u. Uh, so this is where the potential comes from. If you reverse this, you integrate uh, and take a negative sign of the, the classical Newtonian gravitational force, and that'll get you to here if you don't recall where that comes from. But uh, that's that. Uh, the total energy, and this will be apparent why I'm doing this, is just those two things added together. Mm -hmm. Minus G, big M, little m over R. Now, if this equals zero, or in other words, these two terms are equal in magnitude and they cancel out, that is when you happen to be at the escape velocity. The escape velocity, and that is that specific case of a parabola. Okay, so if this happened to equal zero, if I could somehow plug in this velocity here, solve for this, and it was equal to zero, that would be my parabola, and I would have to unscratch that answer and uh, scramble to pick that one. Uh, if it's positive, it's uh, an unbound orbital, and if it's negative, it's bound. If it's negative, it's bound. Uh, that means this term is dominating. The potential energy term is dominating. This is our ellipse. And back to if it's positive, it's unbound. And so we would have our hyperbola. I guess I should say as well that uh, you could have a circle in the bound case, given the very specific set uh, of, of conditions that would let you have a circle. It would be negative uh, total energy as well. So do we have the velocity, and can we get the velocity? This is how I'm going to solve the problem, and this is only one way to solve the problem. Uh, I looked online, and there are people doing the virial equation, which I am not familiar with yet, and I intend to look it up because it seems like it might be a more effective, quicker way to do this. But I'm going to try and get the velocity here for this satellite. And so I'm going to look at Jupiter, and I'm going to say Jupiter is modeled as a circular orbit, so I can use the uh, centripetal acceleration uh, equation here. And so this is the acceleration of Jupiter equals the velocity of Jupiter squared over r. Take it and uh, multiply by the mass of Jupiter. Multiply both sides by the mass of Jupiter. That's going to give me a force. And so I'm going to equate this to the only force that's acting, and that's the force of gravity by the sun, and just do, again, Newton's classic uh, gravity equation. So this would be the mass of the sun times the mass of Jupiter all over r squared. This is your classic gravity equation as well, right? And I'm going to solve for the velocity of Jupiter. So this cancels out. One of the radiuses cancels from both sides. I take the square root. I get the velocity of Jupiter is equal to the square root of this stuff. G times the mass of the sun over R. They're telling me that the satellite's velocity of the satellite is 1.5 times that. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this by 1.5. This is my velocity of the satellite. And I'm going to take that and plug that back into this total energy equation. So 1 half m for the m here, I'm going to use little m that is representing the mass of the satellite, and then I'm going to plug in the velocity of the satellite into this. So I just square this. I get 1.5 squared times this squared, so it just drops the square root, and I get gms. I'm just going to use a big M for the mass of the sun, little m for the mass of the satellite. And then it's going to be the same here. Big G for the gravitational constant, big M for the mass of the sun, little m, mass of the satellite over R. You can see all of these factors, G, big M, little m, and the divided by R are in both of these. So I can factor it out. And I get uh, 
the total energy equals to G, big M, little m over R, multiplied by 1.5 squared over 2 minus 1. Just doing the algebra there. And I need to determine if this is positive, negative, or 0. So what is 1.5 squared? Hopefully, you have memorized your squares up to uh, 20. So 11 squared, 12 squared, 13 squared, 14 squared, 15 squared. 15 squared is what? It's uh, 225, right? 15 squared is 225. So 1.5 squared is going to be 2.25. Okay. So uh, 2.25 over 2 minus 1. Positive, negative, or 0? Well, 2.25 is bigger than 2. So this is bigger than 1. It's going to be positive. We've got it. It's positive. It's unbound. It's a hyperbolic orbit. And we can answer at that point. We know it's going to be a hyperbola. So that being said, we have our answer. We're done. You can move on to other things if you're happy. But uh, just a quick analysis here of this. What if the velocity was not 1.5 times this speed? So what if it was um, 1? If it was 1, we'd have 1 half minus 1. This would be negative. We would be in an ellipse. So if they had given us well, I'm sorry, one is silly. One would be an ellipse. It would also be a circle because that would be the same as Jupiter. So let's say it was just, uh, okay, let's do it this way. Let's say it was the square root of two. So let's say, uh, what is the square root of two? Root two, again, one of these numbers that's it's good to have memorized, 1.4142135, blah, 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 something like that. That's what I've memorized of it. So it's about 1.4. So say it was root two. And this squared is 2, so we get 2 over 2 minus 1. That's our zero case. So if we gave the satellite that specific velocity of 1.142, blah, 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 then we would have a parabolic orbital. Say it was less than that. Say it was 1.3 or 1.2 or 1.1. Say they'd given us as 1.1. As then we would obviously say this 1.1 squared is less than 2, and this is negative, and we would be in that elliptical orbit. So the transition point is square root of 2. If this is less than square root of 2, we're in the ellipse. If it equals square root of 2, we're in the parabola. If it's greater than the square root of 2, we're in the family of hyperbolas. So this is, at this point, almost a neat trivia question. So if you have a satellite that you're launching from planet Earth, and you want it to get away from the sun, okay? You need to take the, the speed of planet Earth going around the sun, figure out what that is, and then multiply that by the square root of 2, and that's your escape velocity if you want to launch your satellite and get it away from the sun. So that's very interesting. It's kind of a little piece of trivia there, and you can check that. Uh, root 2 is going to equal roughly um go go look at this so you get the uh, escape velocity away from the sun divided by the velocity of earth in its orbit around the sun check that and it's going to be about i think it's 1.4 so uh this is kind of becomes a trivia question at this point if you already knew that and you were familiar enough with this that you knew that uh 1.4 one was the term you just saw that number and immediately thought i know this and uh, it's got to be the hyperbola as well so i hope that helps uh, check out some of the other answers as well like i said the virial equation and uh, perturbation theory and stuff other people are talking about uh, in regards to a solution to this problem this to me seemed like the most simple universal way of looking at it so i went with this but uh, not to say this is the best uh, way of doing it there may be faster ways